Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Salik Shirazi Hafadullah. And this season, inshallah, we'll be looking at other maraja and their verdicts on these topics as well. I'm your host, Muslim Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ar. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Ma'ar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How are you? Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Sheikh, we've been talking a lot about um, you know, people in the West and we've been talking about uh, the youth growing up and their involvement and the challenges that the youth face. Um, another challenge that the youth face is that there's this Western culture of having relationships, the whole girlfriend and boyfriend or courting, as they say as well. Um, is this permissible in Islam? Are we allowed to have such relationships? Or is, you know, are we supposed to like, you know, um, only do this when in regards to marriage and maybe allow something like this for marriage uh, and that's it? أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد Initially such relationships with the opposite gender which is an illegitimate and immoral relationship with such um, opposite gender it's not permissible that's uh, one thing uh, to know um, also the holy quran clearly states in two different verses that the one should not take take up um, uh, or friendship with the opposite gender it is forbidden for a believer to uh, make an illegitimate and immoral links with the other side from the opposite gender. The Holy Quran states, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَلَا مُتَّخِذِي أَخْدَان In another verse, وَلَا مُتَّخِذَاتِ أَخْدَان أَخْدَان or khadan means to have a, a friend from the opposite gender. So the verse talks about from the men's side and the women's side, from the male and the female side that they shouldn't have uh, a friendship, a haram friendship uh, with the opposite, opposite uh, gender. So such relations should be bound with a halal way. In other words, they have to turn this haram relationship in a halal way, either by marriage, um, a long-term marriage, or by a temporary marriage or a short-term marriage. Otherwise, they cannot have any types of links and relationships in which is uh, immorally not acceptable and even shari not to be legitimate and, and uh, halal. So they have to use uh, the, um, the halal methods in order to come together. Sheikh, you mentioned friendship. Don't you think it's a bit hard considering you know, we go to high school, college, work even when we go to work we have female colleagues surely we can have some form of interaction or we're supposed to stay away totally well as i've mentioned uh, previously that if you want to talk to the opposite gender with regard to study to work with regard to work it has to be the very limited and minimized to the requirement as we do today in this world, we go to the shopping, we talk to the opposite gender on the cash sales and on the receptionist, for example. So we deal with them, but to the minimum requirement. Okay. So if it extends to chatting and talking and laughing and joking, then that's where the haram comes uh, okay, in the so middle. You're crossing boundaries there. Exactly. Ahsan. Sheikhna. We understand that you know hijab is very very important in, in the Islamic society, and observing hijab, and also we know that when we here in the West when we go out, there's not everybody observes hijab. Not everyone is actually Muslim. There's a lot of women who don't wear hijab. Uh, we switch on the telly when we watch films or the news. There's a female there and she won't have her hair covered or um, you know any of the sort. Are we allowed to actually watch or view um, these uh, footages? According to the Sayyid's um, ruling that um, to look at a picture or a, or a film of uh, opposite gender, um, which is non-mahram, 
it is as if you're looking at the person next to you or in front of you. So uh, as a live image or a picture or, or, a, or a video would be the same ruling, so it's haram. However, the one can avoid um, such situations because basically um, you have in the news channels, for example, you have uh, female presenters, for example, in uh, reporting, for example, from around, around the world. Um, you have in many of the areas, uh, female presenters are there. To avoid the haram look, especially if they have makeup on their face, you know, um, you have to avoid the haram lookings. The best way is to not to concentrate and to stare at that female presenter or reporter. When you look, let's say you want to hear news or listen to news and watch news, you make sure you don't concentrate on the face, on the facial expressions and the details on the face mm -hmm. of that female. So you just look side and your concentration is only on the news that is coming in from this presenter. Otherwise, if we could keep looking and stirring them, that's an issue that has to be considered, which may lead to haram. Excellent. Sheikhna, we are talking about you know, female interaction, and we've discussed that you know, at, at work and at high school. You know, the, the, you know, there's uh, colleagues which are um, of, the opposite, of the opposite gender. Um, what about in important situations, such as maybe a job interview, or you're in a meeting and you're meeting a client, um, and there is someone of the opposite gender, and then they extend their hand for a handshake. Um, I mean, is it allowed to shake the opposite gender's hand? What if there is an issue of an insult, uh, embarrassment? Uh, maybe it's very important. Maybe it's, it's, it's an interview for a very big uh, university, which uh, you know you, you want to attend to, or a job interview. In those situations, is it okay for a Muslim to shake the hand of the opposite gender? The fatwa is clear that it is absolutely not permissible to touch the skin-to-skin -to -skin touch. It's haram to shake hand with the opposite gender who is non-maham to you. Um, of course, if you're compelled, as you've mentioned, it's a job interview, you might lose the job. Um, and other fields, um, let's say not only business, it could be medication, could be all aspects of life. Then if you're compelled, then you can wear gloves and shake hand with gloves, which prevents the touch of their skin, okay. skin to skin touch. And of course, the one shouldn't uh, film the press while shaking hands. So it's just a shaking hand with the gloves to avoid the haram uh, touch of, of both hands. That is if you're compelled, of course, otherwise. Uh, without the gloves, you can't shake hand at any circumstances. I think we're quite lucky here in the West. Um, they've kind of understood uh, that you know Muslim women and, and Muslim men don't really sh you know, shake hands with the opposite gender, uh, and, and the same with other religions as well. And they've become accustomed to this. So, Sheikh, my next question is in regards to jewelry. Now, are women allowed to wear jewelry such as rings, watches, uh, bracelets? Um, and is that allowed to be viewed by uh, the, the non-mahram? Samahat Sayyid al-Marja, he says that it is not permissible uh, for the female females to wear all types of jewelry or even kuhul uh, because that actually, as he says, revealing the ornament because uh, the ayah says, "Wala zinatahun," so that will constitute to show their beautification and the beauty. Because of that, uh, they can't uh, wear these uh, either the ring, wedding ring, for example, which is made of gold, for example, the kohol, um, bracelets, and so forth. They are constitutes to be beautification, so it's not allowed. Sheikhna. What about the opinion on, on this matter, the opinion of uh, the Grand Marja, uh, Sayyid Hakim? What does he have to say on this? Um, he would basically go to uh, the extreme case that if there is, as he mentions, uh, 
the extreme beautification is haram. If it reaches that level that is extreme beautification, then it becomes haram. So, um, Shana, you've mentioned that, yeah, uh, jewelry is not really permissible to wear for, for ladies in front of other men. It's, it's a source of beautifying oneself. However, isn't it mustahab to wear, wear jewelry in, um, when you pray salah? For women, when they pray salah, they should wear jewelry? Well, yes, it is allowed for them to wear jewelry while they're praying, but not to show it to the non mahram men. Okay. So let's say if they pray in the haram or in the grand mosque in Mecca, let's say, or Medina, and there are men uh, in the front of her passing by, and she should uh, uh, conceal these ornaments uh, from the eyesight of the uh, men, non mahram. Shaykh, what about, because you know, ladies, uh, Muslim and non-Muslim, they you know they are always involved in um, well not always but majority of them like to beautify themselves. It's in their nature, especially growing their nails and and, and painting their nails. Is this allowed in Islam? Um, are the, are, are the uh, our sisters are allowed to grow their nails long, and also to to decorate them? Again, if the nail is to be considered beautification and ornament and, and zina then becomes uh, haram to show. Again, wala yubdina zina tahun. So it depends. If it's known to be beautification, then it's, it's haram. Shaykhna, um, you've kind of set the premise in regards to uh, female and male interactions. Um, us uh, boys, you know, we, 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 <laughs> we're quite banterous with one another. If I was to see one of my friends, in, in, let's say in a supermarket, and he's uh, he's talking to uh, a lady, and, and it could be for any reason, um, you know, maybe it's a relative, or maybe he's just asking a question, or, or you know, the, it was it was perfectly you know fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It was halal. Um, later on, I see him, and, and if I was to joke with him and tease him and say, oh, I saw you with that girl in the supermarket. What's going on there? Oh, are you getting married? Are you getting engaged? And I'm to tease this individual. Is this allowed? Is you know just having some banterous fun, but also take into consideration maybe he gets insulted or he gets offended or he get, you know it makes him feel at uh, you know uh, uneasy is this allowed islamically speaking it is not permissible um, you're actually damaging the reputation of this woman in front of the others so we have to make sure that we retain the sanctity of the mu'min hurmat al-mu'min is important even if you saw him doing something wrong, that was his privacy uh, away from the eyes of the people. So you try to avoid spreading. Um, now, if it's a haram act, you're spreading the haram. Isha'at al fahisha, they say. You, you're spreading the haram act. And if not, then who knows? It, w it could have been just an innocent, normal conversation. You know, she was, he was asking from her. You know, where, where is this particular item, for example? Mm -hmm. Which happens to us as well, everyone. We ask the customer service, for example. So we should avoid such intentions, such acts, such uh, notions against the mu'mineen and mu'minat. And, Sheikh, sometimes at, you know, at work, part of our uniform, and also here in the West, we wear uh, what is known as a, a tie. Uh, a long piece of tie. Is this Islamically acceptable to wear as an item of clothing? It is not haram to wear a tie, but if, let's say, in the near future becomes like the cross, the sign for a particular and a symbol for a particular creed mm. or a religion or a doctrine, then it might constitute haram. But that if that happens in, in future, let's say it becomes the sign of the capitalism, for example or Marxism, or secularism. In that sense, then, it might become haram. But for the moment, it's just a normal uh, part of the uh, uh, suit, which is not an issue. Sheikh, you mentioned in regards to, you know, viewing, um, you know, women on television and, and, and um, you know, women who don't wear hijab. What about those individuals, now this is probably for both male and female, that put up posters of their, you know, famous celebrities or, or sports stars, um, is this acceptable, is this allowed? It is makruh to have posters hanged in your bedroom, let's say, 
of the celebrities, uh, sports personalities. Uh, however, if it's females and you're a male, it's an, an issue, especially if she's, she's a non-hijabi, for example. It is an issue you have to consider. So posters of females in the male's bedroom? Yeah, it, it's, an, it is an issue because, as I mentioned just previously, that the state says there's no difference between looking at the picture mm -hmm. of a female, uh, the, the picture itself, or if you see her in front of you. Um, the hurma is the same thing, so you can't look at the picture or, or the film or the movie or the video of, of that opposite gender individual, uh, the female. So it is an issue. You have to avoid these types of posters. But if you want to hang, uh, let's say, the posters of uh, the sports figures that you like, you support the male ones, for example, then that's, there's no issue. It's just that it's macro. Is undesirable and disliked. Awesome. Thank you very much, Sheikhna. And thank you to all our viewers for joining us on Ahkam SOS. If you have a question you'd like to send in to, uh, to the Sheikh, you can get it on the email address ahkamsos at imamhussein.tv. It should be that at the bottom right there. And inshallah, you can join us on the next episode of Ahkam SOS. See you then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.